Good evening. The difference in tone between Boris Johnson and the Irish Foreign Minister Simon Coveney over Britain's unilateral action over extending the grace period for Irish sea border checks is marked. For Boris Johnson, it's about goodwill. For Simon Coveney, it's about a breach of international law. And in what appeared to be a warning shot, the European Parliament announced its decline to set a date for its vote to ratify the EU-UK trade deal. Add to all this the announcement by the Loyalist Community, which includes representative Loyalist Community Council, sorry, which includes representative Loyalist paramilitaries, that they withdraw support for the Good Friday Agreement over the standoff, saying it threatens Northern Ireland's place in the UK, and the row becomes even more fraught, freighted with political danger. So what happens next? And might the new US administration step in again? We'll be discussing that in a moment. But first, I'm joined by our political editor, Nick Watt. Nick, there are developments again on this tonight. Yes, Kirsty, this is now a full-scale row between the EU and the UK. And in the last few hours, Mara Sefcovic, who's the European Commission Vice President... In again, I put the same point to you that I put, uh, I, I put to Jonathan Powell. When you hear David Campbell saying that if it wasn't for the pandemic, there'd be um, demonstrations on the streets, do you fear for that? There is no doubt. Oh, very much indeed. Well, the NHS had scant attention in the budget. The Chancellor is awaking, awaiting the recommendations from the NHS peer review body for 2021-22. However, it emerged today that the government itself, in its submission to that body, called for a 1% pay rise for NHS staff. And today, NHS union said it was pitiful and bitterly disappointing. I'll be joined by our political editor, Nick Watt, again in a minute. But first, a reminder of some of the government's enthusiastic language during the pandemic. You it, you know, this is about choices. And indeed, the Chancellor ch cho chose not to have an increase in fuel duty, chose not to have an increase in booze duty because we've all had a hard year and indeed freeze personal tax allowance. Uh, how do you think this uh, chimes in uh, with the fact that uh, the, you know, the government's had to pay £340,000 to Philip Rutman, the civil servant, to settle a bullying claim with Priti Patel? Is that a good look? Is that a good balance? It hasn't been a good day for the government in terms of... ...to blame the lack of some cross-party effort when all of my colleagues in the Shadow Health team will tell you that they have been asking and asking to have right. cross-party... But, let, let's just, but, but I do want to say, if, nothing from the if Annalise Dodds had been faced with the same situation, was there ever a way in which a Labour government would have suggested a 1% pay rise? That's all I'm asking. Faced with all this, and we know that we are, we're going to have to absolutely deal with the deficit and the debt, this is, would you have ever this is, suggested a 1%? This is not acceptable to us, what, no. would two, But the point well, is, Stephen I, Dorrell is saying, would 2% have been accepted? Would 3%? What would have been acceptable? Just give us a ballpark. What I'm, what I'm saying is that we would have... Used Thank you both very much indeed for coming on tonight. Allegations of sexual abuse are acknowledged to be notoriously hard to prosecute. Often the alleged victim and the alleged perpetrator are known to each other and it's difficult to get corroborating evidence. Cases often come down to one person's word against the other and it can take complainants some time to come forward and be willing to take their story to the police. But Newsnight has had exclusive sight of a new report or super complaint which claims that when it comes to prosecuting these cases in minority ethnic communities, the police in Wales and England are faring particularly badly. Yasmin Arakan reports. That report by Yasmin Arakan and the producer was Hannah Barnes. The super complaint on the police response to BAME victims of sexual abuse will be published online tomorrow. Her Majesty's Inspector of Constabulary and Fire and Rescue Services, the College of Policing and the Independent Office for Police Conduct have assessed the complaint and have told Newsnight that all three organisations will jointly investigate it and report their findings in due course. If there was precious little in the budget about health and social care, the government's levelling up agenda was, if not front, then in the centre. To that end, Rishi Sunak said applications were being sought for some of the £4.8 billion levelling up fund for local infrastructure and just over a billion pound fund from the Towns Fund would be divided among 45 towns in England. But it was the identity of these towns that has upset Keir Starmer, who described the allocation as fishy, with the vast majority of the areas represented by Tory MPs and areas such as Sunak's own constituency put in the top tier to receive money from the levelling up fund. Here's our policy editor, Lewis Goodall.